What's up, G fans? Today I'm doing Godzilla section number 16. So, following up Godzilla vs. Gaia, and I want to do another film that is considered one of the worst Godzilla movies, and that would be bum -ba -da -bum, Godzilla vs. Space Freaking Godzilla. Commonly known as the low point of the Heisei era, which is an era that is mostly populated by movies that usually all Godzilla fans can agree that they are generally good. This was released in 1994, so this is the one right before the series ended with Godzilla vs. Destroyer. So, <clears throat> how do I put the movie? Well, I saw this many times as a kid. I freaking loved it. Uh, and then, of course, watching it later on, when I was older, I noticed a whole lot of things. And my perspective on the movie changed quite a bit. And yes, I am one of those people who definitely is not a fan of the movie you know i still own it of course from my collection i own all the godzilla movies even 1998 but there's a whole lot wrong with this one just like it's hard to really like it and i think the basic majority of the problems can be summed up with the plot uh just f for reference uh the director was kensho yamashita a man who had no experience at all with Godzilla movies or any Godzilla related production. So that's a bad sign already. And then to add uh, a pain, you know, give a name to my pain, uh, Hiroshi Kashiwabara wrote the story. Coincidentally, this is also the same man who wrote Godzilla 2000, another Godzilla movie that the plot to me just was lackluster as shit. And to me, that is no coincidence. Keep this. Kashiwabara guy away from Godzilla because he doesn't want to write for shit. So let's start delving into this. Uh, the basic plot of the movie is that G Force has a new plan to stop the Godzilla threat. What is the plan? Mind control Godzilla. Uh, okay. Mind control Godzilla, okay. And then, of course, that goes. Another uh, plan they have in the meantime is Mogura, this robot. It was built to fight Godzilla. Okay. And then at the same time, Space Godzilla arrives with a very, very uh, convoluted origin, and apparently he wants to kill Godzilla. Hmm. And yeah, chaos ensues from there. So, I mean, the simplest way for me to do this dissection would be... Well, first I'll delve into the human characters. Then I'll go to everything else. Human side of things, human characters, unlike Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla in the previous film, are very uninteresting. The only one that was interesting was... Uh, I can't remember, was it Shindo? Was it, No, I don't believe it was Shindo was the name of this guy, but... You know what I'm told, the guy who won revenge because his comrade had been killed in Godzilla vs. Violante. You know what, that was a pretty good point of the film. More of the focus should have been given to him, really. Because he had the best moments of all the human characters. And then of course we have Megumi Odaka as uh, Miki, Miki Sagusa. I, I almost I almost fucked that up. But, uh, yeah, like I was saying, so building up on the development that happened in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, she's now getting more and more attached to Godzilla. The problem here is they kind of do it in an over-the-top fashion. And I say that because she just has to commonly and openly keep defending Godzilla. When the sad thing is, we, we already know from the other Heisei films all the things that Godzilla has done, which are pretty bad. He's killed a lot of people. So in Godzilla Mechagodzilla, you know, she had, you know, she was very, uh, there was a lot of tension in her about having to kill Godzilla. She still was willing to do it. And Godzilla for Destroy, kind of the same thing. You know, she knows the job has to be done, so even though she mourns Godzilla's loss, you know, she still follows her orders. In this movie, it's just a whole lot of Godzilla's bad. No, he's not bad. And then there's a love story, which is like, okay, once like any other Godzilla movie love story, just really 
not much to it and it's not really important in the long run so why even delve into that and now we get to my favorite part of this Godzilla movie the fucking plot I mean plot may not seem to matter much for a Godzilla movie especially if you're a casual person but for this one when, after watching this one it, you, it, you can just tell good writing actually goes a long way to enjoying one of these movies so let's start from the very beginning Project T which even in terms of Godzilla movie was very unbelievable. I mean, mind controlling Godzilla. Are you insane? Are you insane? That hasn't been done since the Showa era. Kind of like how aliens hadn't been done since the Showa era in Godzilla 2000. So Kashi Obar cashing in these the, the lazy ideas by digging into the past and not the good side of the past. Mind controlling Godzilla is such such a fucking it's out of the blue concept. I mean, how? And then, of course, let's get let's get some real juice of the story. The fact that they actually shoot a little thing that attaches to the back of Godzilla's head, and that's how the, he's controlled. The funny and sad part is during all the fighting in the movie, Godzilla falls many times into buildings on the ground. You would think that little device would have been crushed many 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 freaking times but no it doesn't get removed from the back of his head till the end of the movie by Mickey which is a nice moment and all but still it just come on really it just I don't know Mike and Troy Godzilla is not a fucking good plot concept to work of it just doesn't make any sense it just no I just can't embrace that huh space Godzilla's origin the fuck, man. The fuck. It's... Godzilla cells went into space, got sucked into a black hole, came out through a white hole. Kind of going through that, all that shit somehow mutated into some kind of crystal organism. And people keep asking how does Godzilla cells get there. And the funny thing is, even the movie can't make up its mind. They say either it's Bialante went in there, or it was... Mothra, who's currently in space following Godzilla vs. Mothra, who she is in space right now. However, I mean, to me, that was such a missed opportunity. Why not just cement the continuity of the story by simply saying it's the next form of Bialante? That's how easy this was. In fact, the whole concept of space and bullshit, you, don't even have to, you didn't even have to use that. All you had to do was write and say, Bialante has come back this is her next form and of course it'd be super badass looking which basically does look badass and boom there you go you can avoid this whole this all this bullshit i mean i guess the reason why they didn't go with that because Gothers Bialante had performed very uh poorly at the box office so why mention that name ever again of course being but still i mean you should just win with that story it would have made a lot more sense and would have been a lot more dramatic i mean Come on, Beeline is one of the best Godzilla villains ever. Well, she's not even speaking strictly speaking, she's not even a villain, but one of the Godzilla's best opponents better. I mean, that was just once again poor writing. Uh, and then going to another one of the problems with the movie, Little Godzilla. Oh, they really screwed the pooch on this one. Okay, when we saw Baby Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla the year prior, he actually looked like Godzilla. Both his stance and his body structure. The only thing different about him was, of course, he was a baby, so he had bigger eyes, and he was like a blue color, which I thought looked pretty cool. I know this was a big step up from the Baby Godzilla we had seen in the past, basically referring to Manila, who looked like fucking dog shit in the Showa era. You know, that's one of the things Heisei era got right. So what does Toho do in this one? They take 10 step backwards and make Baby Godzilla look like fucking shit. I mean, what the fuck? He he went... How the fuck did Baby Godzilla turn into this thing? It doesn't look like Godzilla yet again. It's just a fucking little chubby thing. And he went from blue to being green? Why? Why? He even has an annoying little fucking roar that doesn't just all ah what the fuck and making things worse the composer of the movie actually gave him a cutesy little uh theme like really 
you're doing this, you're doing this, you're fucking doing this, aren't you? Which is just disappointing because in the last movie, Scorpion Fukubi, of course, Big Godzilla had a very awesome thing that was gentle and beautiful. This is just trash. And and the worst part is you expect Big Godzilla to like, you know, be an integral part of the story, like kind of like how Big Godzilla was in the last one, but Little Godzilla is just a little bitch in this. He gets the shit kicked out of him. He gets trapped in a little crystal prison, and then Godzilla has to go save his ass by go killing Space Godzilla, at which point he gets freed. Oh, don't, don't get me started on the fucking, the radiation bubbles. I mean, what the fuck? I, smoke rings from show air, one thing, but really? Radiation bubbles? How? Why? Why bother? Screw you. <laughs> the writer, what the fuck? Oh my god. I just, I hated what they did to Baby Godzilla in this one. It was pure, it was bullshit. Uh, next bullshit plot thing, Dr. Abuko is a top scientist who also associate, associates with the Japanese mob? Wait, what the fuck? I mean, what the, I mean, what? I mean, I'm pretty sure the government was paying you pretty well to make technology that fucking control Godzilla. And, but you're gonna give it to these fucking, the mafia? How much would they possibly pay you? Would it be that different? And the worst part about this, like, really? Is there really no thought process to fucking, you know, this whole plan? I mean, giving it to guns. What the fuck? I mean, the mob? I mean, I know I'm digging way too deep into this, but the mob wants control of Godzilla. What are you gonna do? Hold people at ransom? I mean, what the fuck? One of my favorite parts of the movie was when fucking Dr. Kubo, uh, I mean, Abuko gets killed by Space Godzilla because he was an annoying little fucking bitch of a character. I just fucking hated him. It didn't make any fucking sense. Okay, so let's go into the monsters, you know, the meat of the story. Uh, Godzilla, for the most part, looks great in this movie. The only problem I, I have with the movie is that, one, uh, there's certain shots because I don't like, namely the ones where his tail is about to fucking fly off. I mean, the very tip of it, if you notice, you look closely, there's about two or three shots, if not more, where Godzilla's tail is about to fall off. At least, you know, a little tip of it. It kind of reminds me of this guy again, kind of shoddiness. Like, really? You didn't take the time to fix that? You could... For fuck's sake, you could glue it down or something. Fuck, tie a string on it or something. Something wouldn't notice. Don't let the tail flap around like that. Come on. Uh, but for the most part, Godzilla is pretty cool in this movie, and I like him. You know, they did good here. They, could, they didn't fuck that up. Uh, moving on. We already know how I feel about little Godzilla. I think he's a little piece of shit, so fuck him. Uh, another big problem I had to be fucking Mogira. Why? And the biggest problem to me with this, why the hell wouldn't you somebody just reuse Mechagodzilla? You know, update his looks, or, you know, rebuild him exactly the same, whatever. Just use him again. He's a popular fucking character. But no, they went with Mogira, who, by the way, is, of course, is I haven't got a little movie character up until now. He had appeared in The Mysterians in 1957, which is an alien invasion movie. What a coincidence. So he took this random ass robot who had nothing to do with Earth at all, anyways, and just threw him into the Godzilla franchise. And he looks like.